G'day, welcome back to another episode of Toggle. Well this week, I've actually got Kay's sister, Jeanette, and two of her kids down visiting. So today, we've got a beautiful day today, and we thought we would bring the kids out to Tasmasia. It's uh, one of those big hedge mazes. And the lower village, or the village of Lower Crackpot, which is a bit like a little Cockington Green. It's a little miniature houses and stuff. So we're gonna go in and have a look around that, have a bite to eat here. Then this afternoon, uh, my neighbor Glenn has been kind enough to let us go and show the kids the cows being milked. So we're gonna go to the dairy and uh, see the cows getting milked. So anyway, let's go in and have a look. through the maze we kept seeing these little signs with little jokes and riddles on them we soon realized that that was so that you would remember where you had been otherwise it would be very easy to get lost in here but you can remember the jokes and therefore you'd know if you'd been down that path or not There's broken barbed wire. What the hell? Oh shit, I just fell. Uh, you might want to crawl. Oh, I think it's the bottom. Oh, you can see it. Yeah, there you go. Look upstairs on the windows by the look of it. Mm. Well, there you go. Around, Around the corner there. there. This way now. This way. In, this way. Comments were made about how the hedge maze resembled the one in Harry Potter where they had to fight their way through the maze, only these hedges didn't close in on you. center viewing platform you could see right across the maze although looking at these hedges you really can't tell where the maze is in amongst all that however the lower hedges gave a very clear indication of how the maze was laid out it also gave a very good perspective of the township of lower crackpot and also the other little township that they had with all the embassies you'll see a bit more of that shortly
Yeah. All these little houses, uh, a lot of them are based on movies by the look of it. Um, the sun's in a really bad position at the moment, it's still very low. It's uh, just gone 10.30. Looks like they're all basically just carved out of solid, uh, or sculpted out of solid concrete. This one's pretty cool. The Roadkill Cafe, Sam and Ella's. Yeah, salmonellas, salmonellas, anything dead between two slabs of bread. They put these little QR codes on as well, on all the buildings. So you can use your phone and get a little bit of a uh, commentary about each building, why they were made, what was the inspiration. A very interesting little place. Uh, we might go in and uh, do some little uh, other little mazes that we saw just before from up on the viewing platform. There's the viewing platform up the back there. Our goal is actually that tower right there in the middle, but we seem to have covered almost every square inch and still can't make our way in yet. So these are all of the embassies. This guy's got a real sense of humour. Embassy of Iceland. <laughs> An old fridge. Over the back here, we've got the Embassy of Chile. Embassy of Chile. Get it? <laughs> oh, over here. This is the Embassy of Cuba. Because it's just a, a dice is a big cube. <laughs> well, we survived the maze. And uh, now the kids are just having a bit of a play on the Black Sparrow. <laughs> We're just going to have some lunch and uh, and then we're going to head back across towards Natone and we'll go and have a look at those cows get milked this afternoon. It's turned into a glorious day today. Well, on our way to the cows we thought we, uh, we had a little bit of time to kill so we thought we'd stop here at Preston Falls and have a quick look. So we're just going to take a walk down and have a look at these waterfalls before we head across to the cows. Getting down to this first fall was a very easy, very scenic walk. It only took a couple of minutes on a very well established track.
we were told about another fall. It was about 200 metres up the road. Uh, not anywhere near as uh, well established track. I'll show you what we're heading down to have a look at this other waterfall. I actually found this waterfall more impressive than the first one. What it lacks in height, it definitely makes up for in the sheer beauty of it and the way that it has the big undercut behind it. In the summertime, I think it would be a great place to bring an esky and a chair, get in behind this waterfall, and it'd be a nice place to stay cool during the heat of the day. Now we finally made it out to uh, Glen's Dairy. So Mark's just gone up and he's bringing the cows down. They know exactly where to go. They know what the routine is. So they're just wandering down now. Glen will get them all in and then we'll take a look at the process of getting them milked. It's only a very small dairy, this one. This was the smaller of Glenn's two dairies that he runs, but nonetheless it was very interesting to see the process of getting the cows in, getting them milked. You could see that Mark really loved what he was doing and he took great delight in being able to share that knowledge and experience with the kids. He definitely loves what he does. Check out that lovely, fresh, creamy milk straight from the cow.
So it's only the cows on one side of the dairy that get milked at a time. And that's because, as you can see, the hoses, the suction cups, they hang right down from the centre. So the left-hand side will get milked, and then Mark will go along and move everything over to the right-hand side of the cows. The left-hand cows get marched out, a new lot come in, and the cows on the right-hand side are finished being milked. He swaps them back over again and continues this process. Eight cows in each row, cycling them through. Kids were certainly enthralled, however they did find it a bit smelly at times. So as you can see, the milk comes into this big uh, glass vat. It then gets pumped out down through this silver tube, around the corner, and up into this radiator. There's a hose that pumps fresh water through one side of the radiator. It cools the milk as the milk goes up through. The milk then comes back down through this red pipe that runs along over the ground here and then comes up and it's finally pumped into these big vats where it's stored until the milk truck comes along and picks it all up twice a day. morning. Well, this morning we thought we'd bring the kids down to the Don River Railway Centre. Uh, a little historical centre just outside of Devonport. It's only about 20 minutes from where we live. So we thought we'd bring you along and have a look. We've got a beautiful day. It's been raining for the last couple of days. Made life a little bit uncomfortable. But we've got a beautiful day today. So let's go inside and have a look. They have a great collection of railway memorabilia and model railways 
inside the uh, little museum that they've got here. There's also a coffee shop as well if you want a coffee or a bite to eat. All of the engines that are outside in the open are just static displays. They'll never be functional again. All of the engines that are inside the big workshop, the big shed that we'll show you shortly, they're either in a operating order or they are being restored to be operational again. The amount of work and the level of detail that they've put into restoring these carriages is truly amazing. They just look like they're brand new and absolutely beautiful. We're going to go for a little spin on this railway carriage behind us. This one's 80 years old, it was built in the UK. They've restored it beautifully and so it basically just goes three kilometres up the track, turns around and comes back but it'll be a, a great little trip for the kids and then we're going to head back over and keep looking at some more of the steam engines that have been restored over in the workshop over there. The kids were pretty excited to go for a ride on the train. I think the adults were too.
bridge over there used for? Is that a pedestrian bridge? That way? So this is at the end of the line, it's only a little 3k line and the line behind us, uh, behind that is the main line, not sure if you can see that. So the main line that runs from, well it would run from Launceston all the way up to Burnie and onwards, it just runs behind this one so they kind of touch side by side. So what will happen now is the driver will move down to the other end, down there and we will just drive it back again. Every second Saturday they actually run a steam train along this line. I think I'm going to have to get down there one Saturday and get a bit of footage of that too. I think it would be beautiful to get some photographs of a steam train coming through this bushland area. This carriage is the royalty carriage. It was only ever used when uh, members of the royal family came out to visit Australia. So this engine would be the one that would be used every second Saturday. Put a comment below if you'd like to see some footage of that going through that bush area. I'll head down there and I'll get some footage for one of the future videos if enough people want me to do that.
Well, that's it for another episode of Toggle. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode, seeing a little bit more of some of the uh, sites and, and tourist places that you can visit that are out and around our area. Next week, we'll be back up here on the block. Got a couple of other projects to get started. Do the final little bit of finishing off the fence. It's almost there. It's been a bit wet lately, so we haven't been able to get a lot done. But uh, we'll get all that sorted next week. So until then, stay safe, have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. Cheers.